Hello, everybody, and welcome once again to Quarantine Cast on Game Time CT. I'm your host, Sean Patrick Boley. With me, as always, is Peter McGuire. Peter, how are you? Good, man. Long time no talk, right? Yeah, a couple days. I mean, a couple hours, a few hours. I know, right? A, it hasn't a been too hours. bad. 24 hours. Yeah. I have. Can I just tell you something? I have completely lost track of what day it is, what time it is. I, I mean, the only way I know anything is going on, I look at clocks. I don't even know what time, day, time of day it is. I'm going stir crazy, Pete. No one's, I got a friend call me up. He's like, hey, I'm coming out of Pepe's. I'm going to drive by and bring you a pie. I'm like, as much as I'd love to have a pie from you, dude, you're, yeah. not, you're not coming anywhere near me. <laughs> I'm like, I, uh, I've, I settled into an interesting routine. So I have my shift in the morning now. All right. So that's seven. What do you, what do, you do? Like explain to people. What you uh, do. I'm a part of the social media team now at Hearst, like right. the news so side. All the Facebook and Twitter. Oh. Yeah. I heard Basically. someone praising you today saying you did a really good job on. Uh... Oh, you were on the call? No, I just uh, oh. threw the grapevine. Um, oh. Like Pete's doing a really good job. Oh, social media. So thanks. I mean, I. I do it for game time, so yeah, <laughs> it's I know. just the, just the stories come you're, in so much earlier in the day, so I don't have to wait up till one, two o'clock in the morning. You're bringing the game time CT, uh, uh, you know, the game time CT strategy of social media to uh, the rest of the papers. I'm well, I can't, I can't do too good of a job. No, <laughs> no I'm kidding. <laughs> you know, um, so I've come to this routine, right? I wake up at like 6.30, 6.45. Luckily, my desk is right at the foot of my bed, so I can just roll onto my chair. Nice. Uh, I drink coffee now, which I think I mentioned on the last show, but I don't normally drink coffee, but I've been drinking like two cups before like 9, 10 o'clock every day. Nice with then coffee. at about like 10, 11, between 10 and 11, I make breakfast. What's your coffee brand? Uh, I got a Keurig Dunkin' Donuts French okay. vanilla. Okay. What do you make it with? Black. No, I mean, you use a grinder. I mean, oh, Keurig. I, I put the oh, pot Keurig. in, I shut it, and I hit the button. Um, and then I make, like I said, then I make breakfast. Um, then I like have like a sandwich around lunch, like a PB. I had a PB and J today. And then it, between like, then after when I get off at like three, I've been playing these Jackbox games. Have you ever heard of those? No. Like Jackbox TV or whatever it's called. So basically, I'm getting a thumbs up over here. Yeah, apparently it's very popular, but so you go on, it's online and you usually play it with a group of people, right? So you put it on in your TV at the house, like you plug in your laptop to the TV and you can play a game and everyone can log in on their phone. And uh, then you play, you play against each other. It's like fun for parties and stuff. When my buddy set it up parties. where we all join a Google Hangout video chat yeah. and then he shares his screen. Okay. Um, so we sit and we video chat and we play these games against each other. It's for my buddies from home. Nice. And, uh, so I do that from like three to like four or five depends. I've only done it a couple of times. And then, uh, then we do the podcast and then, uh, might do it later. Been, you know, watching TV. I, I've come into this routine, but yeah, you know I, what? That's important. I think, I, I think I haven't really set it into one yet, but I'm starting to. I don't have a, I mean, I have, I have to do producing on the register side or the Hearst Connecticut media side. So I, I produce the New Haven registers front page on the website and nhregister.com. I Not do to that. brag. Not to brag. No, I'm just saying I, that's what I have to man that. And I have to manage a registered citizen in Torrington and, uh, and well, the, we're both, well, we're both uh, alums of the registered citizen. In we are. You mean that, that, that could be an episode. We could talk about where we came from and how we got here. We can do that when we, a little bit later. I always forget this, but a little bit later, we're going to have to have on Jeff Jacobs, the columnist for his Connecticut Media On. He's agreed to join us. He should be coming on uh, in shortly, actually. Um, yeah. So we can ask him a little bit about that. Kind of, he's going to talk about some of the sports world. He's been busy writing columns. He's got a lot of great uh, things to do during this, uh, this coronavirus quarantine. Um, but uh, yeah, just to go back to what you were saying, you and I, both former editors, sports editors for the... Oh. For the registered citizen of Torrington, I so we went on. backwards, which is funny. Like you went from weeklies at the New Haven Register to the registered citizen as a right. sports editor. I went sports editor to the registered citizen, weeklies editor at the New Haven Register. Right. Okay. <laughs> I start. Yeah, I kind of 
worked my way up. I was only at the registered citizen for six months, and then I got a job as a Connecticut Post sports yeah. columnist and writer. I was, so. I was there for 18 months, uh, about a year That's and a half. Bad. And then it all kind of merged, and then you said, you split. You got the heck out of there, right? I went to the Norwalk Hour. You were here for the launch of Game Time CT. I was. And you September were just, of 2013. And you were just one of the, uh, the foot soldiers. That was the, my – that was my – my first football season yeah. was the launch of game time. So I don't know. I don't know Connecticut high school sports without game time CT. Damn right. So yeah, yeah we got you, you. You did a lot of good work for us that year. Yeah. And we then, did the Litchfield County all area teams that lasted one year. Uh, I'm, they're heartbroken. <laughs> I know they're heartbroken. It's, it's strange how much has changed in the last seven years. Yeah. It's like, been media. It's, goes. I mean, you went to the Norwalk hour, which we now own. Yeah. We went. You went from there. Then you went to Record Journal, which we don't own. They, they're still independent, yeah. so good for them. Um, yep. But, uh, but you, you honed your craft, and then you were able to come back. We, we had to twist your arm to come back to Game Time CT. Well, once you offer, hey, you have a chance to work with Joe Morelli. I mean, how do I not go back? <laughs> that was why I came here, Joe Morelli. Of course. You know, it's really funny. I have to call Joe, him at some point. Joe, Joe might get mad at me about this, but when I came over from. Oh, if you think Joe's watching this, you're out of your mind. <laughs> I was this. I was Joe's competitor at the. You know, like we were a lot of guys. I was Joe's direct competitor at the, the uh, at Connecticut Post, and you know we. Uh, I was the basketball beat right there, and he, he would delight in breaking basketball stories in me, and I would delight in breaking football stories in them. And then later on, when Sean Barker, our boss, decided that we were we we're going to start Game Time CT and Matt Renzo and all those guys. Um, ben Duty, uh, the big concern was like, would Joe Morelli? Because I I needle Joe constantly. You and still do, person. and yeah, I still do. But I, you know, Joe and I had a contentious relationship, especially when Twitter came out. We would always kind of shoot barbs back and forth. You know, he beat me on a few stories, like I said before, and, and vice versa. So that was like the big concern: Are you and Joe gonna be able to work together? And Barker had to like assure him, listen. It's going to be fine. You guys are going to get along great. And sure enough, we have. Of course well, we have. I will tell you when, when the opportunity came, which, by the way, was my two-year anniversary right. back at game time uh, last week? week. Last, well, last week, week. Early this week. At Mohegan was, Sun. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, hockey semifinals was the first thing I did. And um, it's the longest job I've ever had. Hey, look at you. It's the longest time I've spent in one place, which is funny because now I'm in news. Yeah. So I barely made it two years in a row in sports. But hey. um, when the opportunity did, though, like in, in all true honesty, it was like a chance to work with you and Sean again, a chance to work with Joe again. Oh, of course. You know, we have, um, you know, Scott, uh, you know, all the other guys. Like, it was just such a great opportunity. Mike Fornabio, who I've known – I've known Mike since I was a sophomore in college when I interned yeah. with the Sound Tigers, and he was covering the team. I sat with Mike in the press conference for like three years. You know, and now getting to work along him, covering hockey games and working on the podcast. And, you know, it, when you look at, like, the guys on our staff, it's – it was, like, an easy decision. But yeah, it's just funny that it's two years now. Yeah. And it You're, doesn't feel like that. You know, you know. Well, now every day feels like, a, you know, an eternity. Well, I, it's crazy, though, thinking back to, like, my registered citizen days when you brought it up. Like, when I first – I was 22 – I was like young and now, you know, I always consider myself like, you know, like one of the young reporters who was like, you know, hip and like Twitter and like yeah. using Instagram and, you know, Twitter video. Right. And now, you, and, you and Mary Alba were the big, before you, before you left, you were the big Instagram. Yeah. But now I like look around the state and I'm like, papers. you know, McFarland's right out of college, Chichester at the Bristol papers, young. I'm like looking around. I'm like, God, I'm like, not one of the old, you know, I'm not one of like yeah, the old right, guard, right. but I'm in that like weird middle space where it's like, you're not young and cool anymore, Pete. <laughs> I remember when I was at, I was the brash, you know, up and comer or whatever you want to call it, like the brash new kid on the block. So well, when, when I, when I first started in Torrington, like, and we want to have this guy on, so I'm going to, I'm going to mention him, but Joe Paladino was like the staple of the NVL. Oh, yeah. Actually. And you were up against him. And I was going up against Joe. And I will tell you this, and I'll talk about it more when we get it on. Joe's one of the nicest, nicest people in the world. Joe Pal, they, they don't call him Joe Pal for nothing. Uh, I mean, he, Joe Paladino, but it, <clears throat> he is everybody. Joe, Joe's everybody. He was so nice to me. Yeah. 
He introduced me to everybody. We would sit at games together. He would like just fill me in on like the history that like, oh, these teams, blah, blah, blah. He would like let me know stuff because I'm from New York. Yeah. Like I went to Southern, but I didn't cover high school sports while right. I was at Southern. Like the first high school game I covered was I think a basketball game, girls basketball between Thomaston and Nanawag. And I went up to Bob McMahon, who's uh, still the girls basketball coach at, at Thomaston. And I go, hi, like, are you Adam Brooding? Because I thought they were on the home side. This was at Nanawag. And no, no, I go up to Bobby. I go, hi, are, are you Bob McMahon? I'm Pete Baguaga. I'm the new sports editor of the Registered Citizen. And he turns around. He goes, no, Bob McMahon's over there. So I walk across the court. He's like, I'm Adam Brooding. I go, okay. I walk across the court. I go, hey, Coach McMahon, I'm Pete Baguaga. And he goes, I'm Coach Adam Brooding. <laughs> That's Bob McMahon. And I turn around and McMahon's like laughing. I never met any of them before. Oh my God. And I'm like, I'm like horrified. But uh, oh, Joe was like super helpful and just awesome. Obviously awesome. I'd worked with Peter Wallace who was a mainstay up there. And, uh, but we've got to have Joe Powell on because oh, he, he was ribbing us earlier today. So. Um, and my, uh, he wasn't, he left actually. I took his job. But Dave Agostino was like, I, I didn't grow up because I'm not that much younger than him. Uh, <laughs> he's not that much older than me. But I did w- read all his stuff when I came back to Connecticut. And uh, I started, you know, checking out all the coverages from the New Haven Register and the Connecticut Post because that's where I was, was in that area. And Dave was like the edgy, you know, he was very edgy. He, he had a very strong opinion and strong takes. And he, he didn't take any crap from anybody. I, I really admired his writing and his writing style. And when I left, I never met him until much later after I took his job. But he left me this like amazing manifesto on how to cover sports in Bridgeport. When I went to the Connecticut Post, it was the Bridgeport Post, but it was, you know, Connecticut Post. So uh, he left me this huge thing. about, And it's, the biggest thing was how to cover the boys basketball beat which is so much different than it is now. Back then, you couldn't get anybody on the phone. You had to go see their practices personally. And, you know, that was, they expected you to, to drop in, say hi to them, see what was going on. And that's how I did it. I had to go to, the, I had to go to Hart, old Harding High School. I had to go, to go see Charlie Bentley in his practices, Barry McLeod in his practices. You couldn't get any of these guys on the phone. And then Bassick was the, was the one, like, I was really nervous about because, you know, it, it was just like, you know, in, in kind of a bad area. What's Bassick all about? And, and I found out, so I went there and you couldn't go in the front entrance. They, but they, for the gym, I don't know if they do this anymore. I doubt it. Um, where the gym had, the, had an open door, like the back door is propped open. So their buddies, you know, friends can, of the program could kind of coming, go as they pleased instead of dealing with, you know, going through the, the school after hours. So uh, I had to go in there and I'm like looking around. I'm in the locker room. It's like dingy and stuff. And I'm like, and I just see these guys running up and down the court finally. And when I got to the gym and I had to find Harrison Taylor, the Har- Harrison Taylor, the, the, the boys basketball coach at the time. And Bernie Lofton, who was the current basketball coach, was also there as well. And I remembered my meeting with him was like, he was like, the first thing he asked me, the first words out of his mouth was, I'd sat down, I kind of hung around and I said, hi, I'm Sean from the Connecticut Post, blah, blah, blah. I'm, the, I'm Dave Agostino's replacement. And Dave was really good to Bassick, and they, they enjoyed Dave. And they didn't like a newcomer. <laughs> you know what I mean? They did not like a newcomer. So I'm sitting there very like, you know, I'm the outsider. I'm sitting in their gym. They're all looking at me like, who's this guy? Yeah. And Harrison Taylor looks at me and he says, he's an old school dude. Harrison Taylor's like, where's the other guy? <laughs> <laughs> like literally like that. And I'm like, well, he's – I'm the new guy. I, I, yeah. I took his job. He left. He's like, oh. And he kind of ignored me. So Bernie Lofton was really nice. And Bernie's kind of showing me, you know, talking to me about, oh, yeah, all right. So yeah, he was like, the, you know, he's the good cop versus the bad cop. Yeah. So finally, you know, Harrison, want, Harrison was like really, he was being difficult. So I started asking him questions. And, he, and, he, and I'm like, finally, I got frustrated with him. And I go, what do you want, my resume? He goes, looks at me and goes, Yeah. <laughs> And I was like, all right, well, I covered um, uh, men's basketball at Syracuse University for three years. Um, I did that a little bit. I did a little freelancing here. I've, I've got my chops at high school. I started here in Connecticut, so I know about Connecticut sports. I mean, I've only been away a few years. Um, you know, I've, I covered New Haven basketball back in you know, the last four years and blah, blah, blah. 
And uh, it took a while for him to warm up to me, but I remember distinctly like him saying like, yeah, he wanted my resume. He wanted to hear what I, you know, why he had to trust me. And eventually I got along great with him and I got along great with Bernie and, and those kids were just tremendous. They, they've been through so much. And that's how I kind of, like, that was my little opening to, uh, to covering a beat. At, at the, and it's much different now, I'm sure. sure. Well, even when I started, I mean, it was so easy to get people on the phone when I was in Torrington, like, you just call people. Obviously, you go to games and you're doing features, you're going personal. But if I wanted to, like, call a coach or get in contact with a coach, I'd just call them. Yeah. Same when I was in Norwalk. But it was when I went to the Record Journal and I started doing videos uh, on their sports department because I was there as a news person, like a news producer, like digital con con content. But I kind of, like, weaseled my way into sports because that's really what I wanted to do. And I got to work with Sean Kroshek and Brian Carpenter, the sports editor of the Record Journal. Brian was all about going to practices. So, like, Again, we only covered six or seven schools, so it was a little easier to do during football. But, like, every day during the week, we were either at a Maloney practice, a Platt practice, Cheshire, Southington. Yeah. We would just go. And, like, you know, we're at Cheshire. Don Drush is there. Hey, what's up? You know, you go to Platt hanging out with Bruin. And I never really experienced it till then. And now I even try to do it, like, when I go – to like do a feature story like i'll get there early try to get everything out of the way and then i'll just kind of hang out if i don't have to like run to go yeah. anywhere you know just kind of hang out talk to the coaches get a feel of what's going on it means nothing coming to me saying that it's a lost start because i never do but you talk to any reporters who have been around all the time and like they always talk about oh we used to go to all these practices and you know, you see the team three or four times a week yeah, you know, before a game or whatever. Now you get a guy on the phone, you start, you know, texting. Yeah, yeah. So, a lot it's of, a little it's different. A lot less, but it's a lot. Well, there's a lot more school because all these newspapers have merged. Yeah, and it's a lot less personal. You don't get to know the teams as well as you used to. At least from our perspective, I'm sure there are other there are other newspapers today. Being one, Republican American being another. Um, you know, uh, maybe even, even the uh, the Bristol Bristol papers. New Britain, oh. um, Record Journal, Meriden, they're very, they're still very hyper local. Yeah. And they get to know their teams very well. So they'll probably break those stories better than, than we ever will. But oh, yeah, it's tough. It's, it's just the way that the business is going. Uh, so well, I think, it, I mean, I think it does. I was working on a story earlier this year where I had to call like 15 coaches. Yeah. And like, oh, that story. Yeah, that story. And, uh, it was nice to be able to just get on the phone and, you know, I go from yeah. talking to Lou Marinelli to Jason Bruin to Sean Ireland yeah. and I didn't have to drive to new, to new Canaan, to Meriden, you know, back to Norwalk. So that was kind of nice. It was a nice benefit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So there you go. There's a little bit of a little quick history. So I don't know. What do you, what do you think? We got to, let's bring a little, let's get a little Jeff Jacobs action in here. I think we have to. Um, and talk about some of the news of the day with him and we'll see where we go from there. Right. Sounds good. Uh, Jeff, right. Jeff's going to so, be a treat. Yeah, let's bring Jeff on. He's been working all day. Let's get Jeff on right now. Joining us on the show is, of course, the head sports columnist for Hearst Connecticut Media Group and Game Time CT. It's Jeff Jacobs. He's at the bottom of your screen. How you doing, Jeff? How you holding up up there in the uh, the hinterlands? Well, we only have two uh, confirmed cases in Wyndham County of oh. coronavirus, so I'm in the thank God in the in the in the cold spot so far. So I'm I saw. I saw something on, I guess it was the Washington Post that put out a thing where Wyndham County, out of all the counties in Canada, only got a, only got a B for social distancing based on uh, their cell phone tracking, which is kind of spooky, but I don't know. I mean, uh, I guess- I think we deserve better with only two people, but yeah, I'm, I'm semi self uh, quarantined up here. Over 60, two heart operations. I'm in the uh, I'm on the endangered species list. Yeah. <laughs> I am uh, I am trying to really really behave. What so have what you, you uh, yeah What have you been up to? Like what do you? Obviously you're you're writing a lot. Yeah, but writing. Are you a puzzle guy? Are you binging Netflix? You remember when I had my open heart surgery? I, I I almost put myself back in the hospital by binging too much Netflix on. Uh, <laughs> was that the mind? Was that the uh, the one about the mind and the and the mind uh, hunter? Yeah, the Mind Hunter. Yeah, yeah, I watched it so much on the like the second day I was out of the hospital that I had to go lay down for like three days. But yeah, no, I'm a, I'm an uh, I'm a Netflix binge. Uh, so I've had, yeah, I've gone through that. So that's sort of like I write in in Netflix binge and then watch cable news and then feel like puking, 
and uh, go back <laughs> to watch him on Netflix and write. I don't watch. Any- have you Have you watched Tiger King yet on Netflix? I have not because everybody. I like to be. Everybody is talking about it. Like, believe it or not, I had not seen Peaky Blinders. That's so, fair. So so now I'm binging on that. But like, I I've gone through three or four other ones, and uh, and uh, I I love them all. I've heard really good things about Peaky Blinders. Haven't started it yet myself, but I highly recommend Tiger King. I knocked it out in one Sunday, I think. It was... You have plenty of time. Yeah, Uh, yeah, that's the sad part about this. Uh, You know, I'll need more than one recommendation, I think. (laughs) Yeah, no no doubt. You were actually busy. You've been writing a lot of... You actually had a really good column, I thought, the other day. You know, on the heels of the, you know, the CIAC closing, the winter's down, Mm -hmm. and we don't know what we're doing for spring. There's a lot of apprehension out there. You know, I saw the governor said that the schools won't open until at least April 20th. And that's very optimistic in my opinion. And people don't like the fact that, that, that he even said later the day after that schools might not be open until fall, which means spring has gone. Right. I don't think anyone wants to hear that. But I, my argument to them was yesterday, and a lot of people were like, well, why would he say that? Well, I mean, it's better to be blunt now. You can't sugarcoat anything. That was my uh, thought yesterday. I don't know what your take on it was, uh, what you think our, our situation is here. Yeah, lying's not going to help us. So let, let me just date back to the, the, the winner decision because I feel like I'm still pissed off about it from yeah. a lot of things I read on uh, social media. And stuff. Yeah, we got but, killed, uh, Jeff. Yeah, that's going to take me some time to get over. I'll get over it, fellas, but it's going to take me some time. I just thought that, as I've written, and I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, pound this into the ground too hard, but like CIAC showed a lot of forethought and a lot of wise decision making. They obviously knew that the schools were looking at shutting, you know, yeah. shutting down, or they're exploring the different methods they they were going to take, whether they, you know, for long term teaching online and things, and and uh, uh, I. You know, the, what the kids did, that's okay. They reacted, oh, and yeah. that's democracy. You know, good for them. Yeah. Uh, as they're seeing that it was the right call. Uh, but some of these people just, just they went off the edge. Like, it, and now, you know, I don't want to push them anymore because they'll still tell you that this coronavirus doesn't exist if you push them far, hard enough. So uh, they made the right call. And now, and, and in talking and having like a lengthy discussion with Glenn. I did a column on it. You know, it was really interesting. He was really big on trying to save the spring. He he's made it very clear now, in a can experience, whether it's victory, defeat, a part of the end of a season, the beginning of a season, a shortened season, he believes the experience is is important, and it doesn't always have to go to a, a championship conclusion, uh, which it, we all want it to. But you know, the, here was a guy that. You know, he lost in the state finals his last high school baseball game. He won a national championship, his his last college game. Yet he's sitting there telling us it is the, you know, the amalgamation of all those experiences that is the most important thing. So he wanted to give hope on the spring thing, just as he's accused of, like, you know, killing hopes on the winter thing. Yeah. I thought that was a a point he tried to make in his original press conference that got really twisted and and kind of thrown out the, you know, thrown right back at him in a completely like crazy version of it. And I was trying to explain to people, I think he's trying to say, listen, it's about, you're missing the point. I know you're upset. I know you are, but it's the spring sport, the sports, sorry, sports is about what you do with your teammates and the relationships you create and the lessons you learn not about finishing out a state tournament. And a lot of people didn't like that. I mean, listen, it was a lot of raw emotions. And I, right. I explained our yesterday's podcast that we did our first one that I thought a lot of it was a lot of us. And even I, and I don't think a lot of us really understood what this, uh, this virus does and how it operates and what, why, what they were doing was the right move, even though it was an extreme move, because it's, you know, this is an extreme thing. This is an unprecedented thing. And uh, to, 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 it had to be done otherwise because we didn't know who had it at the time we had no idea and and just w- all it takes is one people are asking well could they play in an empty gym and but who was going to host these Mohegan was completely out of the question that by that point nobody even knew it they just I don't think and I don't really blame them for that because I don't think we did a really good job in this country trying to explain to them how desperate this was I don't think we all understood either so I thought that was a big part of it but the continual reaction, the continually drubbing down, even like now, 
there's still people out there who are saying, well, I still think the CIC did the, did the you know, they handled it wrong. Or they got lucky. They got lucky. I like that one. Okay. It, you know, it, yeah, a lot, like of, they stuff, got lucky lot, lot of things that were drawn to me, guys, was, was uh, they brought up the fact that they've had problems putting divisions together or their schedules together or playoffs together or coaches. And, and I, my, my, my point all along is, yeah, I, and I've drubbed them on various points over the years, but like, yeah. Those are like, you know, like say we want, a, we want a shot clock is a little different between a life and death situation. Absolutely. And it's like, so that really, you know, I, I, I chafe at that because I, I just think that they didn't, if they felt like, well, they, they sprung it on us, you know, and, and I looked around it was, and it was interesting because the other day I wrote the column, uh, the Milford ADs, they brought the kids down and told them before uh, the announcement. The announcement, which is nice, but let's face it, that's still springing on them. You yeah. know, and it, you know, it's a, it's the right thing. It was a cool thing to do because you know you met the kids face to face, but it's still springing news on them. And you know, there's no way to soft pedal that sort of disappointment. And, well, uh, I, I think some of the, the like you said, the kids. It was awesome what they did. They, you know, it was democratic uh, that was democracy. They have the right to protest, and I think, except for a handful of kids who took it as an excuse to either miss school or, you know, do stupid things. And there were a handful of them that right. did stupid things. I thought that was great. I noticed a lot of the, the, the arguing, there. yelling on Twitter. I was there. I was at yes. the protest. But the yelling and all the crap on Twitter was a lot of adults. Yes. A lot of parents because I recognize a lot of last names. And then, and I mentioned this to Sean, like, a lot of people were upset that they couldn't win a state championship. Now, as someone, I played high school sports, not like at a crazy level, but played varsity hockey, varsity volleyball, what what up, actually started. But we, I mean, we won in hockey, but we didn't win in volleyball. I played baseball for three years. We didn't win. It's but exclusive. I'm looking How many back, teams are winning state championships? Yeah, but I'm saying I'm looking back and I'm the bus rides, right? The practices. Right. I think I tweeted something out. Someone's like, what's your favorite baseball moment? And I was like, when I hit fungos once and I hit one over the fence and my coach yelled at me and made me run and I never hit fungos again. <laughs> if you can't hit ground balls, you can't hit fungos. But like, that's the stuff that you remember. But we didn't have the high school coverage on Long Island when I was in high school. Now Newsday does a really good job, but I don't know, times are different, What? What? whatever. But you look here, like, yeah, we have UConn basketball, men's and women's, and then that's kind of really it, right? High school sports are so important in the state because we have nothing, but because you look at high school staffs or you look at sports staffs, and Sean and I talked about some of the other papers in the states, like we're all high school centric, you know, outside of us at Hearst, where we have, you know, Jeff obviously is the columnist, but we have beat writers for every major sport. There's a lot of them that don't, I worked at the Record Journal, we didn't cover UConn. Right. We covered high school sports. So now it was like a kind of a look in the mirror moment where it's like, are people really this upset because there won't be any state champions? And is it our fault or do we have some of the blame because of the coverage and what we do? We do podcasts, we do videos. I mean, there's some coverage that we give okay, these kids okay. that even when they go to a division one level, they don't get. Maybe. Right. I, I, I asked my own son, uh, and I, I wrote this at one point, I can't remember which column, but I said, how do you think I would have reacted if he, he got knocked out, I don't know, it was a quarterfinal or something, in class M by Bloomfield, his last year at Plainfield, and got knocked out by uh, uh, St. Uh, St. Joe's Fairfield, or what's, yeah, no, excuse me, Notre Dame Fairfield, uh, yeah, a couple times, and he asked me what I, how I would, I'll, I asked him how he thought I would react, and he said that he thought I would have reacted same way as far as writing it down adult wise but he figured i'd stay up all night trying to figure out the one way that we could have done to pull this thing off and and that's kind of true you know what i mean I, and so i i kind of feel for the parents uh, like you said the, uh, the adults oh, wow. have talked about it in the, in the sense that uh they, they wanted the best for their kid and they wanted to change uh, they wanted to try anything possible to do it but in the end the conclusion was yeah, we could have played one game that first night or one game the next night. But if if the CIAC had tried to keep it going through uh, last Saturday and Sunday at Mohegan Sun, they would have been locking them up, the CIAC people, for, for, uh, for uh, abuse of students. 
Yeah. So, I mean, you know, and, and we talked about the logistics. It, just, it wasn't about a game. It was about a tournament. And that was – and you could see it closing fast. But, uh, you know, I just – and conversely, like we said about the spring, um, I'm happy that they're – you know, they're, they're, you don't have to call it off until you – it's the right time to call it off. Well, no, it doesn't – it looks really bad right now. And if I, if I had a, a really good – my good opinion was that I don't think it's going to happen. Right. You know, right. But, but, hey, who knows? Maybe – if they could fit something in at the end of May and, you know, a couple of games, maybe it's possible. I doubt it. I highly doubt it now, but yeah, yeah. it was worth, it was worth, it was worth doing it when they, when they announced that last week. Yeah, I think they had to kind of take that approach. Cause I feel like that's the approach we're all taking in all walks of life. It's right. let's wait and see what this is going to be. Obviously take precautions, but I think we're all at a wait and see mode as me. I, I read all these news stories now. Um, so that's really a lot of what I'm reading is we're going to, you know, keep and uh, we're going to obviously monitor everything. And I think the CIAC kind of fell in that, uh, followed that path. And I, I think it was the right move. I mean, to just come down and just cancel spring and not even give it like a little bit of a chance, yeah, I no, think would have been, yeah. been a crazy uproar, but I think someone tweeted at us, Oh, there, this is just, uh, in a, in a, uh, an excuse for the inevitable, and maybe it is, but you, you know, Mass is kind of taking the same look and see. So is Long Island. From Massachusetts the stuff that I read. Just announced today that schools won't be open until at least May fourth. Today they announced that, so I, it's I, not looking good. I do have to give Glenn Langer, Langerini. I can't pronounce his name. It's not that hard. Sorry, Glenn. Uh, credit because he. Let's face it. He stood stood up there, and I hate to use the word bullet, but he took he he took the bullet for a lot of a uh, lot of superintendents and administrators and principals and etc. who agreed with him, yeah. but didn't have to put their uh, didn't have to put a public face to it. Where were those guys, by the way? Where were the principals and the superintendents that I know he got chewed out by a, by a few of them, but the ones who agreed with him, where were they? Where were those they, people? Where, they didn't stand up for it. He got left on – he and the CIAC got left on an island. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, him and the CIAC, but he was the one who gave the quotes. He was the one who had the press right, conference. They're like, they were going head. after him. They were going after they, Glenn, and got, it, was got, pretty, it was pretty crappy to not see anyone come to his – I know <clears> someone power. at the CIAC, I know that they were a little concerned that nobody stuck up for him outside of uh, maybe us or, you know, right. or maybe a handful of coaches or maybe – Nobody went out publicly and really stuck up for them. Well, they, well there were some coaches them. that I talked to who are, you know, on Twitter and, you know, they're very in tune. And I've talked to them like, you know, text or messages and they agreed with the decision, but they didn't say anything publicly. They didn't want to get slammed. Yeah. That's what yeah. I think. I think Pat Lynch, the Ansonia baseball coach, stood pretty tall when I talked to him. Yeah. He said, hey, I really disagreed with what happened. But I sat back, read, it, read some more things, watched it happen, goes, I'll admit, I was wrong. Yeah. Now, and, and, Pat, and Pat, Pat, I, Pat Lynch and I had a discussion the day after, I think, and I was trying to explain to people on Twitter who were all coming at me. I got called everything from a, you know, a progressive hack to a fascist, which is, <laughs> I mean, come on. Uh, but uh, all these guys, and, uh, and Pat was like, you know what? I started reading into it. I started, this, can this be this serious? And, I, and Pat said, you know what? I think it is. I don't agree with the decision at the moment. At the moment, he didn't. Right. But he's like, well, maybe we could have done something else. But at the more and more I'm reading about it, more and more I'm understanding it, which goes back to my point. I thought, I think a lot of us just, and again, I didn't really, really understand it until my brother came in a couple of days earlier to explain it to me. And I was like, really? And once I understood that, I was like, this is, we got to, we got to hole up. And I'm, a, I'm of the, I'm of the opinion right now that we should all be the whole country should be locked down for like two, two weeks. Like they just did in the UK. I mean, that just made, but I, 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 just got, I have to stay in personally. It's just, yeah. I, I'm, I, to me, I'm risking my life if I go out. Uh, yeah. I, I just uh, feel that uh, uh, I, I lost my train of thought there, buddy. I'm getting, not, not, that's why they, uh, that's why it's like, I, I should stay in. Uh, 60 <laughs> plus for this. Uh, go ahead. All right, I'll, I I'll, 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 I'll remember it in a little bit. But uh, as far as like, you wrote a column, this is the other thing I want to talk to you about. You wrote a really good column the other day. You talked to uh, uh, Vince Cirillo over at Law uh, about social distancing. And I, I've seen a lot of, you know, not, not unconfirmed reports. People have kind of come at, not come at me, but have told me that they're going, they're going to take their walks over by the local school and they're seeing kids out there. 
you're seeing kids out there, you know, maybe captain's practices. I don't know. Maybe it's not school. Who knows? Um, right. Maybe they're doing, but that that's really, really, we should not, not be doing that right now. And I know a lot of kids are trying to get prepared and then maybe they get their guys together and there's no supervision. What the heck? We're young. You know, what they, what, you know, I've seen that, that attitude. Tell me, Jeff, what did you take, you know, from your column, anything else uh, some of the guys talked to you about? Or what do you think is important there? To, that, right. Well, one uh, of them was the, uh, the Stanford AD when I talked to him. He talked about, like, individualizing some workouts for, for his kids. That's a good thing for coaches and ADs to get out to all their, all their athletes, just in case they don't have some things that they can work individually work out at home on, on some things by themselves or with their siblings. I, I, think, that's a, I think that's a good thing to, to – uh, to uh, push out there because uh, you got we got to do something you know so I, I go on the back I got a bunch of uh, woods in my backyard and that's where uh, I, I go out uh, there and walk my dog you know and yeah. kids have got to stay active in some way but I just talked to uh, Karen Smith uh, who was a tremendous swimmer at Ridgefield now is turning into one of the best swimmers in the world in Florida you know he swam the fourth fastest uh, well fourth as a person I mean it's been more than four fast times but the fourth as a as a man, uh, fourth fastest 200 uh, freestyle in the SEC meet, and you know he's been shut down. And uh, you know you think about how uh, uh, they're they're shut down. He and he's like he can't find a pool. He was out last week oh, in yeah. Florida swimming out in the out in salt water, out to like shark wow. uh, uh, tower, uh, sighting tower. That jumping off and swimming back. He was open open water swimming. He came home to Ridgefield. And, you know, now he goes, he goes, I hate running more than anything, but he's, you know, he ran some and, and he's trying to do things. So he's in not, in not a very different position than our high school kids are. And, you know, I, it was funny. I got tipped off to some, uh, a team that supposedly was holding a tryout. And it turned out that the pictures were from the previous year, but you know what, at first I was going to go, boy, we don't want to like spy on each other. Like as a communist nation yeah, or something, yeah, right. so, but you know what? I don't mind knowing, you know, I don't mind knowing the eyes are out there and I, I hope you guys can appreciate it. Uh, and when it's over, we're gonna have to take somebody out to dinner for, for like uh, doing a really good job of, of not of social. Distancing. I saw that. I, I'm excited for that dinner. Oh, Cause that'll, well, that'll mean that we're kind of going back to normal. Yeah. And that, that's going to be a good sign. I mean, we joked about it on the first episode, like we might just go straight into football preview mode in like May. Yeah, but you know what I'm afraid of, guys. You're gonna pick. You're gonna pick a uh, football team to take out, and, nah. I, and, then, and then then you'll and then when and then when you when the check comes, I'll go. Oh, Mr. Jacob said that he wasn't <laughs> going to uh, pick up the tab, so it better be a spring sports there. Yeah. <laughs> and it I, I just have this feeling like all of a sudden she and football is going to be showing up with seven of them. I'm going to be picking up some tab with like. That hey, I can't afford. no, no <laughs> offensive linemen allowed. <laughs> First Connecticut already paid the tab for a few football teams uh, back in uh, Sandy Hook when we did that that podcast True. a few few months ago. Yeah. Which feels like it forever ago. Right. By the way. It doesn't even honestly. It doesn't even feel like March. No. Like it really. No March Madness. I mean, it, no. Just, just I don't even like. It's just another day. We're just, just lugging along. Wake up, make my cup of coffee, have my you know breakfast, have my lunch, play games do this, do some grad school work, go to bed, up again. It, yeah. It's just become it's, just a routine. Yeah. It's amazing to me. I've, the people I've talked to, it's just hitting everybody. You know, I talked to Jay Moran. He's the athletic director of Southern Connecticut and the mayor Bill of Manchester. Owls, baby. I didn't in the know major, that. And the crazy. mayor of Manchester. So there's a guy with, like, just a fascinating things on his plate, you know. Uh you know, he's talking about taking the hoops down. He, you know, one last Wednesday, too many kids were playing basketball, and you know they were going down the slide. And plastic evidently holds the virus more than everything, so they, they're out there roping off uh, uh, kitty slides and taking down basketball hoops. And, and then you do you talk to the high school ads, and then you know, I, like I said, I talked to uh, a, a, one of our great swimmers. This guy's going to this guy could be do something really special next year at the Olympics. And, you know, he's back, and, and it's one story after another, and it, it, we just find ourselves collectively in the same, you know, in the same boat, and it's... it's uh, We're in the same boat, Jake, and here's the thing, though, we all, but it's all affecting us in personal, differently in personal ways. Right. 
you know, and we, we put a call out to uh, athletes. How is it affecting you? We want to know. We want to know how it is affecting you personally. How is it, how are your teammates coping? You know, this is, especially for seniors, you know, this is your last right. year and you're getting, you're basically telling you, you're not going to play. How are you coping with that? How are you coping at home? What are you doing? What are you, what, what have you talked to people or do you do chats like this? This has become all the rage of them. Zoom. If you have stock in Zoom, by the way, <laughs> yeah, they're doing great. Huh? It's gone up like 12. Like everybody's like, doing this. It was insane. I mean, but, like I said the other day, like I do my, I have a grad school class Thursday night with like 30 kids and we're all going to be on Zoom. It's literally like the Brady Bunch. Like you have all <laughs> the different boxes and we're just going to sit there and like discuss. I had a coach call me or text me right before we did this. And he was like, Sean, I'm going stir crazy. You got it. I mean, if you want to chat, you want to hang out or something like chat or something, please let me know. I don't know what to do with myself. It's, yeah, uh, we've, yeah. Had, we've had a lot of people re, uh, reach out that want to come on and just yeah. get away from everything and just be able to. I'm do. really anxious to hear about what everybody else is doing on this because, you know, I mean, Jeff can only do so much. He's done a bunch of great comms. I thought. Uh, about some personal stuff but again it's so now like the story shifts to this what are you doing like right. how are you getting through this what about kids who are going to about to go to college next year in, the, in these sports you're not going to play your senior year what do you uh, how do you or how about the kids who are trying to get scholarships for next year and then this is their big year this this moment here i mean those are those are all very very interesting questions and in how they're doing i mean thank god they have huddle and things like that and they can kind of show off their last stuff but not their their current stuff and that must be really tough yeah i mean you look at a lot of these sports the big ones minus football and you know i don't know how this will affect the future of like the aau circuit or legion ball aau baseball or travel softball teams like if they can play in the summer that will help you know juniors and sophomores and freshmen who still because a lot of these kids and I'm just, you know, talking mainly baseball because that's what I really know. A lot of these kids get recruited off of their, their travel teams. I was just reading uh, Baseball America post about the top, you know, baseball prospects in the Northeast. And I'm looking at all these kids and I'm trying to find like who's from Connecticut, right? So I'm doing command, you know, F, C, 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 T. And I'm going down and it's name, state, travel team. Interesting. Town, high school. Hmm. Right. And it's like, I'm like, looking, I'm like, I, I'm like, I see a name. I'm like, oh, I know this kid. And I'm like, you know, CT Blue Jays, which is one of the really good AAU teams in Connecticut. I'm like, and then I look down a little more. I'm like, oh, he goes to this school. I'm like, I, I guess it's a good thing right now yeah, that these kids options. have that other option. They have that if they do lose their season, they will have that other option. Same with basketball. Like if they can play in the summer, there's all those crazy AAU tournaments where a lot of these, you know, great players like, you know, Donovan Klingon, he plays in like the top, you know, AAU circuit, you know, the kids at Windsor, like all these kids will play, which is good that they have these options. And we usually like to be on the other side of it and be like, oh, they're ruining sports. But like right now they might be saving a lot of these kids Fair. an opportunity to play at the next level if they're going to lose a year. Not that they're like, they just happen to fall in the right, if this has been happening in the summer, then it would be something different, you know, yeah. but yeah, but absolutely. In this case, they are, I mean, at least there's something, you know, I, I know I talked to a, a softball coach, a softball AAU coach um, who said that they're, they're looking to, you know, maybe use this to their advantage. If it, if it uh, gets to that point, I know I've, I've heard from some people who say Legion might be, might extend their season if it up into, you know, if, if, if we get there, I don't know if we're going to get there. Um, you know, it's really tough. I, I, I don't really know the answers about So I'd love to hear. I'd love to hear from what kids have to say or what even coaches. I mean, there's even coaches who like who, who, who they're trying to evaluate kids. They want to see what, what the kids have coming up have, have gotten. They're going to lose a whole season. These spring coaches they are going to lose a whole season for, of that. And they're not going to know who they're going to have next year. Pretty much. I would love to see a lot of flexible it, flexibility come this summer on a lot of different sports hmm. and and the decisions. NCAA, uh, high school, uh, uh, you know, CIAC types around in different states, uh, in conjunction with AAU and various uh, platforms like that. I, I would really like to see uh, a lot of uh, cooperation there to help get, get numbers out there. It, it, it would it, imagine if you lose the baseball season somehow, uh, American Legion, even if it's for this year has more teams and more players, you know, getting them out there to chance to play. I think we ought to be really proactive 
and flexible and helping the kids get back out there this summer uh, after it's done. Because I, I think the rules are going to change. I don't think everybody's going to uh, necessarily like take off for vacations after they've been right. essentially right. on vacation. You know? uh, uh, so it, I would encourage that, that someone should be looking at that, uh, you know, because the entire weight of, young people's athletic experience can't all fall on the high schools. Right. And here's another thing to think of. And I, I just thought of this is that there are a lot of people who are, are unemployed right now and they could get even, I mean, it's probably going to get any worse. Yeah. I mean, do they have the money for this stuff? I mean, are, are our family's going to have the money to do this kind of thing. And, and, and what solutions can we help them provide, right. provide them if their kids aren't going to be able to play because they, they lost their job. Yeah, we're getting some assistance from from the federal government, maybe even from the state, but I'm sure those are going to be some hard decisions to make. You know, you have to pay for all these tournaments and stuff, and the, because the tournaments have to be have need money to run, it's right. just a domino effect. And I'm really curious about how that's going to play out. I mean, what can we do to help them? I mean, I know this is just a drop in the. I mean, people at the end of the day are concerned about what what a person's kids, you know, baseball career. But this is again, this is their lives they're talking about, and this might be a gateway to a college they don't have to pay for. Right. Oh, well, uh, yeah, it's going to be, there's going to be a big year adjustment here because you're going to have also athletes as seniors in college. They're going to be eligible to come back. Now, I don't know how many of those are going to come back because there aren't as many, aren't as many people except for a football and then and a D1 basketball that gets full rides. So just because they can come back doesn't mean they will come back because uh, there's still money involved unless they want to get a, uh, graduate degree or second major and but there'll be a there'll be some clogging of the pipeline and so some kids that you it'll, it'll affect some of the kids coming out where yeah. they may yeah. want to go and what they can afford so and in you know, like you said we we may we won't have the best judgment on some players now i would say the best players like football's already been played Basketball's already been played. These guys are scouted like crazy. So it's the lesser sports, and, and but those kids don't matter any less because you know what? In those well, D two has some scholarships, but in D three, there's a lot of you know there's different uh, having a kid play D three. There's a lot of ways of getting financial help, and and, and those kids are going to be affected. They're the ones that aren't aren't judged, haven't been scouted and judged as much on their abilities as the biggest names. The biggest names are going to be all right. Believe me. You know, because the money at the top in the NCAA will we'll, we'll make sure those guys are all right. Uh, it's, the, it's the millions of others, the regular athletes who want to play in uh, other sports in college that, that you know, it, we'll have to see. It's, it's not going to be perfect, that's for sure. Yeah, well, I was talking to a couple of buddies. Uh, we were talking about the MLB draft and, like, a lot of, co you know, colleges already canceled their seasons or their tournaments, uh, the postseason. The MLB draft is still going to happen. Like at one point or another, the MLB draft is going to happen. Over a thousand kids are going to get drafted. It's just the way that it is. So it's how do you scout these kids? How do you, if you're a kid, like, and there's they're going to vote. The NCAA, I think, is voting this week on whether or not they're going to give them an extra year of eligibility, like Jeff mentioned. And it's like, how do you scout these kids? And then it's if you're a kid, like, do you want to go back? Do you feel you're ready? Well, you didn't leave last year, but now you're going to like what it's going to be. It's going to be absolute chaos in a sports world chaos. We're like, who's, we don't know who the best player in this, you know, the country is, let's say for baseball. Like you look a couple of years back, like there are guys who play their way into the first round, which is in the MLB draft going from a second round pick to a first round pick is millions of dollars. Right. Not just a fancy, you know, draft card. Like you go from being a second round pick to a top 10, top 15 pick. That's like a couple million dollars. Right. And you're like, how do you draft these kids? Like how? And even in the NBA, I mean, look at the NCAA tournament. How many years have we, we as a country, fallen in love with players who have went nuts? Look, last year in Hartford with John Mormont. Right. John Mormont was an excellent basketball player, and if you were a big college basketball fan, you probably knew who he was. Then he goes up to Hartford and lights it up two days in a row, and all of a sudden he's the second overall pick in the NBA. Mm. If Murray State doesn't play in that tournament, is he the second overall pick in the draft? Maybe he gets drafted, but is he the second overall pick? You look at Steph Curry back in like 09, 10. 
But Steph Curry played himself into a lottery pick. He played himself into a, a national stage million dollar deal. watching him. Yeah, how many of these guys that we're not going to know or we're not going to see go from being a fringe pro p- player to just not having a shot because they didn't get to play for a year. It would be really interesting with this class where they end up or how they end up. Get, I mean, we can never really find out. What yeah, yeah. well, wait, we'll wait until after it happens five, ten years down the road. It'll be real interesting to look at drafts. It, uh, various drafts and various sports this year. Well, see how see how teams do uh, vis-a-vis all the other years. Yeah. yeah well, I mean, so if just, it's the same, it'll tell it'll tell us that uh, they've been watching kids a lot longer than we think. Mm-hmm. And if it's dr- gr- and if it's drastically off, uh, we'll know. Like like uh, you guys were talking about Pete there when when uh, talked about like how you kind of knew with those two guys you mentioned and Curry, by, t- by the time they came out, you knew they weren't going to miss because they were yeah. older. Uh, and, or the, everything may, so many things may be done on projection this year in, in, the, in these various drafts that well, there could be a lot of bad miss. I, I think it's going to be, and Jeff, I, I know you're a big hockey fan, when the NHL had the lockout in, in 04, right? I mean, there were, they still had the draft. Players were still signed in free agency. Then they didn't have a season. Now, other teams are playing the junior leagues, the European leagues, and then they have the draft again. And then all of a sudden, that rookie class, after two years, was stacked. Right, you had Ovechkin right. and Crosby, who were drafted number one overall a year apart, are rookies. Right. And it was great for the NHL to have those two guys come in the league at the same time and basically go head-to-head as long as they have, you know, comparison, maybe Magic Larry for, like, my generation, if you're a hockey fan. But, like, they were still playing. Now you're looking at it and you go, who – you look around and you go, none of these people are playing. And then the, co- the high school kids, I mean, how many – you look at all these football players that we cover, we had on our All-State team, that weren't committed when we selected the All-State team. Look at Mike Morrissey, right? Mike Morrissey was our player of the year. Right? Yeah. Mike Morrissey didn't really get a lot of offers till after his senior season. Yeah. Now, football's different. Obviously, it's in the fall – as opposed to spring and not really getting offers in June, you kind of know where you, you're going at that point. But Mike was like tweeting out all his offers, D2, D2, D2. Then he has a senior year and he has a great senior year. Right. He wins a state championship. And all of a sudden, like these D1, double A offers, you know, FCS offers all of a sudden start showing up. Right. So you kind of look and you look at baseball and softball. And I, I don't want to include track in this per se, just because like track, the time speak for yourself. We, uh, like you run a X40 or you run an X100 meter, like you probably can run that again right. or you know, something in that range better or a little bit worse. But baseball and softball, lacrosse, like some of these kids are waiting for offers still. and They might never show up. We're about to run out of time here. So, uh, yeah, that was a, I, I, lots to talk about. Obviously, yeah. really a lot to talk about, and I'm sure Jeff will be all on that. I mean, what else are you going to do? You know, make some phone calls you know, to see where everybody is. You know where to find me, Buster. Yeah. <laughs> well, watch Tiger King. Watch Tiger King and report back, please. Uh, I, will, I will. I will. Right. <laughs> well, we appreciate you joining us, Jeff. I mean, what Thanks. else do you have to do? We, we Again, there's a lot to talk about. It's, this is unprecedented territory, so this is going to be really – I mean, uh, you know, it, it sucks to have, not have any sports on, but at least there's a lot to talk about. I mean, there's there, there's clearly a lot to talk about, so – uh, we appreciate it, and uh, we'll 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 see you. Uh, we'll see it, and then down the road, we'll we'll do this again. We're gonna try and do this, this as much fun. as possible. You'll find, like I said, you know where to find me. <laughs> All right, All right. Thanks, Jeff. I'll see you later. Later. All right, thanks, Jeff.